Good afternoon on today's very special Angry Bulletin. Yesterday, in a NASA facility just outside of Sandusky, Ohio, the media got an opportunity to see Dream Chaser Tenacity one last time before she heads to orbit. And even though I wasn't invited to this event, thanks to my friends at Sierra Space, I have all the footage for you right here, right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to the Angry Astronaut. So, I have a bittersweet tale to tell you today. As some of you may know, I was determined to get to Cleveland. Well, not exactly Cleveland, but rather to a NASA facility in Ohio where Dream Chaser was being put through its final tests before it heads to space sometime in April. And I had every reason to believe that I would be allowed to attend this event simply because I had the support of Sierra Space. I really felt that that gave me an excellent opportunity. I applied for media credentials, applied to be allowed to attend. Sierra Space put in their recommendation and NASA rejected me for the third time. And I became incredibly frustrated. However, Sierra Space came through for me in a huge way. First of all, they made sure to get all of the footage that was taken during the event and sent it to me literally a few hours after the event took place to make sure that I could get it out to you viewers today. In addition to that, to my great surprise, I received an email from the head of media relations at NASA's headquarters. She wanted to know a little bit more about me, had heard something about the channel, heard that perhaps I should be more seriously considered, and wanted to just find out some more information. I think I can credit Sierra Space for a lot of that happening. And it was an interesting interaction. She made some recommendations on what I might be able to do to get my channel as part of NASA's accepted accredited media pool. And none of these recommendations were unreasonable as far as I was concerned. And I'm in the process of making the necessary changes to the channel. Incidentally, one of these changes is to give you viewers an avenue to issue any sorts of complaints or just to issue a suggestion for a correction. If you see anything that is factually untrue, like for example, I say that Elon Musk wants to set up a colony on Venus instead of a colony on Mars or something like that, then you now have an opportunity to send me a request for a, request for a correction and a retraction. And this is something that I am more than happy to add to my channel. And I'm going to have a panel of my team members put together to consider these requests and to issue retractions where necessary. So that's an interesting change being made to my channel. Very happy about all of that. But what I am the happiest about is the opportunity to bring you all of the details of what happened yesterday just outside of Sandusky, Ohio. Let me tell you something. I can't wait for this ship to take off. The leadership for both Sierra Space and for NASA were out in force yesterday, including Tom Weiss, CEO of Sierra Space, and Jimmy Kenyon, the director of the NASA Glenn Research Center. But the star of the show was unquestionably Dream Chaser Tenacity. And by the way, the reason that Sierra Space uses the name Tenacity for Dream Chaser is they tend to name all of their products after certain types of emotions or just certain emotional states. And Tenacity was definitely an appropriate emotion to be used for this particular spacecraft because of all the incredible challenges that they went through trying to get this ship ready for action and all of the effort all of the determination it took to get the job done. But in addition, one of the other stars of this particular event was the Neil Armstrong slash Glenn Research Center itself. Jimmy Kenyon made lots of good points about what the cadence of this facility has become like recently. In the past, this facility was definitely used, but not nearly as much as it's being used today. And this is because commercial space 
space has a critical need for the types of test equipment and test facilities that this center has at its disposal. So this was kind of a sales pitch for NASA as much as it was a sales pitch for Sierra Space as well. However, it was a sales pitch with a lot of justification because as I have said many times on this channel, Dream Chaser is the most versatile spacecraft that will be heading to orbit at least in the near future. And yeah, I even include Starship in that equation. And let me tell you why. Starship, even though it has tremendous payload capabilities, those payload capabilities are probably not going to be needed by the vast majority of customers who are heading to low Earth orbit. By way of comparison, there are a vast number of customers that are going to have a need for the types of capabilities that Dream Chaser brings to the table. For example, if Starship or any other conventional spacecraft is conducting a re-entry into the atmosphere, all of the payloads on board are being subjected to tremendous g-forces. That has a negative impact on lots of sensitive experiments that may be coming back from the International Space Station and other space stations in the future. By way of comparison, because Dream Chaser resembles a small-scale space shuttle, the g-forces that its payload will be subjected to is around 1.5 g's, as opposed to 6 to 8 g's during a conventional re-entry. That is a tremendous difference. There's another difference as well. Even though Starship will theoretically anyway have the ability to land just about anywhere in the world, there has to be a massive exclusion zone reserved for a rocket this big simply for safety reasons. Whereas Dream Chaser can set down on virtually any airfield that's long enough to accept a commercial airliner. And even if Dream Chaser runs into an unexpected emergency during the re-entry and landing process, they have backup runways everywhere from Cornwall to Japan. Amazing versatility, making the spacecraft, at least potentially, one of the most promising that's going to be heading to space. And once again, before I get SpaceX fans all triggered, I didn't say heading anywhere to space, just to orbit. This is not the kind of spacecraft that you would take to the moon, nor is it the type of spacecraft you would take to Mars. But in terms of an orbital taxi, there's nothing better. Now, the NASA and Sierra Space leadership had an opportunity to field quite a few questions, and although I didn't get a chance to hear all of them, a lot of them, I must say, were pretty basic. Again, that's great. They definitely need to explain the spacecraft to the layman, but let me go ahead and cover some of the answers that were delivered. No, this spacecraft is not going to be carrying any people. This is a cargo spacecraft, at least for now. However, that's going to change in a couple of years when a human-rated spacecraft is scheduled to be introduced by Sierra Space sometime in 2026 to be used in conjunction with the new space stations that Sierra Space is going to be involved in. So a very exciting future for this spacecraft, but no human crew right now. But one thing that really irritates me about the media coverage that I've seen thus far about this event is how the shooting star was represented. Now, once again, I haven't seen all the coverage, so I can't say this for certain, and I'm not sure what exactly was said during the event, but shooting star is being sold as a space trash can, something that Dream Chaser is going to haul along, which will be able to carry additional cargo, and then it'll just burn up in the atmosphere atmosphere kind of like the Cygnus resupply ship from Northrop Grumman. If I was an engineer or technician who had been involved in this particular project, I would have been mad as hell about that description. Shooting Star is an independent, fully functional spacecraft on its own. It has its own solar panels, therefore its own power supply. It has its own navigation system, RCS thrusters, the works, and it's designed to carry out secondary missions after the primary mission is completed. Yeah, it can serve as a trash can, but it can serve lots of other purposes as well. As a matter of fact, the U.S. Space Force has contracted Sierra Space to use the shoot 
shooting star for some sort of small-scale military space station. So shooting star has a huge number of capabilities that were not properly explained again by the media. I'm not sure about how it was represented at the actual event. I'm sure it was probably explained a lot better as far as that's concerned, but it is pretty disappointing. Shooting Star is an amazingly versatile and innovative spacecraft that's going to be able to do some really cool things in the future. And not only that, put a lot of additional money into Sierra Space's coffers. And the more money you make in each individual mission means that the cost that every customer has to pay for their little piece in the puzzle is going to drop. Therefore, launch costs go down for Dream Chaser. Individual mission costs go down for Dream Chaser. Really, again, lots of amazing advantages that this spacecraft has that a lot of its competition doesn't that's going to make it a serious competitor in the future. Again, all of this depends, however, on Dream Chaser's ability to succeed during its first mission. And there are a lot of scary things about this first mission. Obviously, Vulcan Centaur, which is carrying this ship up, is only going to be carrying out its second launch. And yeah, Vulcan Centaur performed magnificently during the Astrobotic mission, but who knows what's going to happen on the second launch. Early launches are always a dangerous time for new launch vehicles. In addition to that, the spacecraft has gone through exhaustive testing up to this point, with every component having been tested to failure, but that is no guarantee of success. A first-time prototype is always a very risky spacecraft to fly. This is a test flight. Yes, they're going to put some dummy cargo on board. They may even put some real cargo on board as well during this particular flight. But the future of Sierra Space will either soar or crash and burn depending on the performance of this spacecraft and this one crucial flight. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of anxious people in April of this year, assuming, of course, that Dream Chaser launches them. It is possible that the launch could be delayed if any concerns arise during this testing. However, the shake table testing is completed at the Glenn Research Center, and now vacuum testing is going to be commencing within the next couple of days, but there is no reason to think that the testing won't be complete by April, that the ship won't be delivered on time to the Cape and launched on the second flight of Vulcan Centaur. But again, if there are any concerns, any unanswered questions, I'm sure they're going to delay this flight rather than risk the future of the company based on a couple weeks worth of delay. So we'll see what ends up happening. But in my opinion, the maiden flight of Dream Chaser Tenacity has the potential to be the most crucial launch of 2024, especially if one considers that Artemis 2 has now been delayed until 2025. I'll keep all of you up to date. Thanks very much for watching. Please like please subscribe also please consider supporting me on patreon because i do intend to go to the launch of this particular spacecraft at cape canaveral come hell or high water it would be great to have your support on that all the details are in the description and as always stay angry about space